Prem Rawat, widely known by the honorary title Miraji, has dedicated his life to spreading a simple message that each person has a source of peace and fulfillment inside themselves. His message is from the heart. He speaks about the possibility for each person to find peace within, regardless of circumstances. If you are looking for fulfillment and peace, he says, the solution lies within. If that is what you want, I can help. Welcome to Words of Peace. In Argentina, Prem Rawat's message of peace has been presented on television since 2001. For the first four years, the show was aired on a national cable with five million subscribers, then was later broadcast via the Latin American cable television channel Infinito with more than 20 million subscribers. Nowadays, Words of Peace is aired throughout Argentina from the capital, Buenos Aires, to smaller cities such as Ushuaia, Treleu, Mendoza, Formosa, Chacabuco, Córdoba and Mar del Plata. Prem Rawat has visited Argentina regularly for the last 30 years and his life events are always being received with excitement and appreciation by Argentinians. On a recent tour of South America, Prem Rawat spoke on two occasions in Buenos Aires before attending six other peace initiatives in Brazil, Chile, Peru and Uruguay. Yes, it's, uh, it's uh, really me. It's good to be back again in South America. It's been a long time. Voy a los eventos porque me interesa el mensaje que él tiene para comunicarnos, especialmente a mí. Me encanta lo que él transmite. Para mí es un mensaje que llega a mi corazón, que es sencillo. No tengo manera de, de pensar en otra cosa en esta vida que sea escucharlo a él, en ese punto de, que, de lo que yo quiero aprender y saber de esta vida. Así que para mí siempre es este, revelador escucharlo y, y necesario ya a esta altura de mi vida. Do you understand what it means to be human? Do you? Have you actually understood yourself? Do you understand what it is to be human? Do you know the nature of human beings? Our nature? Three things, right? You were born, you are alive, and you're gonna die. You have any questions about that? <laughs> this is knowing, this is, this is not believing, this is knowing. So, these three things happen. Has the birth happened? Yes. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. <laughs> and are you alive? Yes. So you're very busy moving towards the third target.
That's what you're busy doing? That's, that's the fact. Day and night. You can't help it. You, you can't even slow down a second. This is what you're busy doing. This is what you are busy doing even when you are busy doing other things. This is happening in the background. That's why it is so important to take that little time and catch it. Because when you are busy in this acceptance of this blessing, you are the closest, the closest to the immortal. As far away as you are going to get from mortality. Coming and going is my blessing. Of this breath is my blessing. Get as close as you can. Get as close as you can. So, that <laughs> that is my advice to you. My advice. This is all I can do. I can give you my advice, my reminder to remind you again of what is important. Eh, más allá de lo que pase, de las cosas que uno puede evaluar y decir esto es bueno o esto es malo, en el fondo ser un ser humano es poder disfrutar de estar vivo. Es un sentimiento. La más alta expresión que que puede tener un ser humano, estar vivo, reconocer que estar vivo y disfrutarlo. Prem Rawat's message of peace has reached many people in prisons around the world. In South America, words of peace is viewed regularly in more than five federal prisons. Prem Rawat spoke about the freedom of the heart when he visited inmates at Ezeiza Women's Prison, 30 kilometers from Buenos Aires. Here, for the last three years, many inmates and some prison staff have been watching DVDs of Prem Rawat's peace message, and they have sent an invitation to speak to them live. Prem Rawat accepted the invitation and brought a message of hope and peace. The women expressed their gratitude to him and asked questions about finding inner peace. We're all prisoners. Some are prisoners of ignorance. We are. Some are prisoners of lies, some are prisoners of this, and some are prisoners of that, some are prisoners of their wives, and some are prisoners of their husbands, and some are prisoners of, I mean, we're all prisoners. Prisoners. <laughs> but to be the prisoner, to be imprisoned by clarity, to be imprisoned by true love, to be imprisoned by knowledge. That would be nice. We're not, but that would be nice. Yeah. Yes, you know. To be, to be imprisoned by like clarity, you can't go anywhere. I mean, if clarity said you can't go far away from me, that would be very nice. In my opinion, that would be really nice, you know. It would be really nice. In being here today, and I have been to prisons, and I used to visit prisons, 
When I was very young, they used to invite me, come talk to us. And what can I tell you? But I have something very, very special to tell you. That there is hope. Every day. Average lifespan of a human being produces 25,550 days. Approximately 70 years, 25,550 days. These 25,550 days are not going to come as tomorrow, but are going to come as today. Today. That's what you will have. You will not get to 25,550 tomorrows. No. You will get 25,550 todays. And each day that you have, regardless of whatever the circumstance may be, is a gift to you. It's a gift. We always compare whatever happens on the outside to this life. I am successful, I am not successful, I am here, I am this, I am that. The sun rises and it shines for everyone. Everyone. This breath comes into you and it brings you the gift of life. Every day. And every day that you are alive, it is the possibility to make heaven for yourself here on this earth. That's not someone else's responsibility, that's your responsibility. Because you are the only angel on the face of this earth who can do that. Prem Rawat spoke in the island city of Florianópolis in southern Brazil as part of a South American tour. Human beings on the face of this earth are a little bit unique. Unique. Because when you try to understand the nature of rock, what is the nature of rock? It's very simple. Nothing happens. When the rock gets wet, nothing happens. It just gets wet. It's on the surface. And then if the sun comes out, it dries. That's it. A tree, the water falls on a tree, it has a different nature. It turns green. It uses the water. The rock doesn't use the water. Tree does. Water falls on the sand in desert where it is just pure sand. No seeds, nothing. Nothing happens. Nothing. Water falls on fertile soil and things begin to grow. These are the natures. But the nature of the sand does not change. Nature of the rock does not change. The rock cannot say, I would like to change my nature. Because even if the rock wanted to change its nature, it could not. But uniquely, 
As human beings, we have some choices. We have some choices. And if we choose that one part of the whole equation that is real, then something very beautiful happens. And what happens? That our life gets filled with peace, with happiness, with joy, with tranquility, with clarity, with understanding, with simplicity. And we can choose this. We can actually choose this. And when I say to you, choose, not from here. Give your heart an open run and see what happens. See what happens. What will the heart choose? The heart will choose that excitement. This is the only thing you have that's not going to age. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what is your destination? What should be your objective? To be fulfilled. To have that lamp lit every day. Every day. Choose. Make that choice. You want to be a rock? You want to be a tree. If you cannot decide, try to be a tree, not a rock. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I started with saying that it, what, nothing ever happens to the rock. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. It can be in water for a thousand, hundred thousand, hundred million years. Now pull it out, 30 minutes in the sun, dry. No trace of water. No trace of water. And there are plants in the desert. And they show you sometimes on these survival shows that if you are thirsty and you're in the desert, you can go to these plants and they have these they have, in Africa, they have these tubas, and you can go in, cut the tuba out, grate it, squeeze it, and you will have water. That's the difference. That's the difference. After speaking in Brazil, Prem Rawat traveled to Chile's capital, Santiago, on the next leg of his South American tour. So, <clears throat> I understand it's been 13 years since I've been to Chile, but this is what I said, I'm here. For me, what needs to be talked about is always the same. This life, this existence, our being here, and fully understanding, realizing what this opportunity is, and taking full advantage of it. Because all too quickly, all this will evaporate. 
And when it does, there's nothing you can do about it. See, right now you can do something. You can do something about every day. You can do something about every hour. You can do something. But when it evaporates, then you cannot do anything. So, same message, and I put it different ways. Because my hope is something will make sense to you. And when it does, it'll change your life. Because the whole objective, in my opinion, is to be fulfilled. Peace is rightfully yours. Rightfully. Tranquility is rightfully yours. Truth is rightfully yours. Light is rightfully yours. Rightfully. Rightfully belongs to you. Next to the end of his South American tour, Prem Rawat flew to Peru's capital, Lima, to give two talks in the intimate surroundings of a university hall. It had been more than 20 years since his last visit, and he spoke about missing the city and its people. Thank you. It's been uh, 27 years since I was here last. I always enjoyed coming to Lima. I always did. And I know people have been missing me. I have been missing coming to Lima too. I'm here to tell you of a place where there is no chaos. And that place is inside of you. I have come here to tell you of the possibility that you can be fulfilled. And I am here to remind you, you should not, you should not get used to confusion. You should not get used to doubt. You should not get used to ambiguity. You should not get used to the chaos. You should not. You're a human being. You're a human being. And being a human being has given you a right, a birthright, a fundamental right to be fulfilled. And I'm here to evoke that right in you. So you will find it. Because what you're looking for is within you. Always has been and always will. La cosa más valiosa en mi vida es reconocer que estoy viva. Es un sentimiento único e intransferible. No se lo puedo transferir a otra persona, es algo que lo puedo sentir yo nada más. La manera que más disfruto la vida es cuando soy consciente de, de que estoy vivo y eso es, automáticamente me produce placer. El reconocimiento de, 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 de estar vivo y de la, del infinito potencial de ese momento. Eso me da un placer impresionante, cada vez más. In Uruguay's capital, Montevideo, 460 people came to hear Prem Rawat give an intimate talk about the beauty of the human heart. You want to be beautiful? Then be beautiful now. And there's only one thing that makes you look really beautiful. And it's not your makeup. It's when your heart is full. 
You look beautiful. Just like a child. The child is happy. Everything is full. The child will smile and play and frolic. And when it's in pain, no. What do you want to fix? There is nothing to fix. Only to be fulfilled. They can show you something that can bring you that joy, that can bring you that peace. Thank you for watching Words of Peace. And we hope to see Prem Rawat in South America again very soon. Prem Rawat, widely known by the honorary title Miraji, has dedicated his life to spreading a simple message that each person has a source of peace and fulfillment inside themselves. His message is from the heart. He speaks about the possibility for each person to find peace within, regardless of circumstances. If you are looking for fulfillment and peace, he says, the solution lies within. If that is what you want, I can help. There are 6.7 billion people on the face of this earth. What do these 6.7 billion people want? What do they wish every day so that there be peace in their lives. What is peace? I mean, it's just having a close family really and friends along the way. If you wouldn't have any wars around the world, there'd be no conflict, um, wouldn't have any corruption with government, etc. Um, everyone be living in harmony. In my opinion, I think peace is a state of mind. Um, unless you're thinking more uh, on a wider scale, on a world scale, whereas it might be people not killing other people for, uh, for their reasons. But yeah, no, I think peace is a state of mind. There is one thing that has never changed on the face of this earth, and that is the true desire for peace that resides in the heart of every single human being. For as long as human beings have been on this earth, they have been searching for peace. But what does that mean? Is peace just the absence of war? Is it making amends after a long argument? Is it retiring to an island and never having to worry again about money or your position in life? We all say we want peace, but what does it really mean to have it? I think peace is something that everybody should be aspiring to. Uh, but I guess peace would be something different to everybody. When there is no war and uh, all our people live in good conditions. I think peace is something that like you have a peace of mind, you, you feel calm in your heart. Peace is kind of intangible like that though because you know 
I guess you could say that it's freedom from conflict or I guess you could say that it's freedom from fighting but I think that without being too wishy-washy there's this general vibe of peace and it means being safe, being comfortable and having that kind of equality. Why peace? Whose idea is it? Is it something that we learned? Is it something that we saw in the sky? Is it something that we saw in the water? Is it something we saw on a leaf? Where do, why, why? Where does this idea of peace come from? For most of his life, Prem Rawat has been bringing a message of peace and hope to people around the world. Why is this world interested in peace? I think there's a lot of separations between people and um, where they're from or what sort of money they have. And I think there'd be more peace if people would look past that and recognize each other as, you know, human beings. I think it's probably one of the biggest questions you can ask. I think there's a lot of self-discovery out there that I think a lot of people need to do and I'm about to start that, I think. I think we can all realise that we're not that different from one another, even though we look very different and it appears outwardly that we're different. Fundamentally, I think we really want the same thing and that is happiness and love. Regardless of all these differences, the want of every single person on the face of this earth is the same. And we look at the differences. This is what we have trained ourselves to see, the differences. You are different because you're this. And some people even say difference is good, and I agree. But just to be different, in the middle of all the differences, to see the similarity, to see the want of every single person that the demand, the desire for peace is there. The desire for peace transcends every single barrier. Every single barrier, whether it be it a prison, whether it be a prison, Even those who have been incarcerated desire peace. Those sitting on giant hills and mansions also desire peace. Those who have little to eat also desire peace. I don't want to be in turmoil. The worst war is the war that happens within a human being. The worst war, because there is no ceasefire to it. You can't just put a stop on it. You can't just put a break on it. You can't just negotiate with one party. <laughs> and the trouble with the war that rages inside is even if you win it, you lose. <laughs> because it's with yourself. I think I go through stages of feeling a lot of peace and other stages the war rages within, you know? Yeah, world peace, I don't think I'll see it in my lifetime, but I, like, I hope I do, but there's so many problems and so many silly problems that can be overcome that people are stubborn, I guess. If we look at it as a massive project that only a few people will have to work on, it seems kind of impossible, but if wait, you look wait, wait, wait. At, at it as something that everyone's partly responsible for, there's no reason why it shouldn't work. I would say that on the individual level, certainly peace is possible. Absolutely. People like to say inner peace, but I mean... On a mass scale, I'd say realistically, no. I don't think peace is possible. You can reduce things, you can stop these silly, not silly wars, but wars that aren't really going anywhere, but you're not going to get total peace. Absence of war is not peace. Because it is people, it is us, we're the ones who start the war. When the differences become so great, 
and the intolerance, intolerance reaches epic proportions, wars will happen. When I fail to see another being as I see myself, then wars will happen. When the causes and the reasons become greater than the sanctity of peace, wars will happen. When I fail to realize what is the value, the value of being alive? Wars will happen. And believe me, believe me, if ever that the war begins outside, it would have begun on the inside first. And the war on the inside far more dangerous because it is a fire that may never be quenched and it can rage on and on and on and on in the battle outside at least you will hear a noise but the battle inside you may not hear a peep The battle outside may have strategies. The battle inside may be just going on and on and on and nobody's even negotiating. Hey, stop. This is your time. On the face of this earth, this is your opportunity to be alive. For me, when peace begins within me and it has taken hold of me, when I have allowed it to blossom, then peace for me is also possible on the outside. Then peace for me is also possible, a reality because I have thought. Over the years, Prem Rawat has spoken to more than 12 million people in over 50 countries. His message, however, has always remained the same, that true peace begins with the individual and can already be found inside each and every one of us. This is what I want to talk about. Because the desire for peace has nothing to do with wealth has nothing to do with how you live, what you speak, what you have attained, how you think, what you think. But the desire for peace is fundamentally and innately in every single human If you understand just this much, just this much, that's enough. If you understand that the desire for peace comes from inside of you, then you understand why the seed needs to germinate. Then, if you understand the inner want to have peace and accept the inner want to have peace, then that is the day your journey towards peace begins. That's the day you take the first step. Oh, I think that the search for peace and happiness often leads people into less peace and less happiness. Um, 
because I think people go looking for it rather than letting it find them. I think that people think it's something that comes from without. It's a you know a program you can do, a course you can graduate from, a, a religion you can follow, and all those things are very worthy and very good. But if you don't know who you are and what you want, um, then you're very unlikely to be happy and you're very unlikely to be peaceful because that stuff comes from inside you. But I think a lot of people, I think they want this bigger, this bigger, greater want more than they want physical things. Like on the outer level, everyone wants something. Like they want a new pair of shoes or you want a new TV. But that other want, that want that actually fulfills you, I think that's what people are really looking for. Peace, it's a word. We have so much respect for it, but in the end, it's an empty word. It's up to us to fulfill it, that give it a certain meaning. And then it becomes important or it becomes relevant and then it makes sense. In 2001, he started the Prem Rawat Foundation to address fundamental human needs so that people can live their lives with dignity, peace and prosperity. His humanitarian efforts and work towards peace have been acknowledged by government, educational and community leaders worldwide. Food is important, but so is peace. Water is important, but so is peace. Clean air is important, but so is peace. And all the things that we need to strive for, those basic necessities are important, but so is peace. It is a pleasure to see so many of you gathered here in this illustrious Yunu on the United Nations International Day of Peace. What is the reflection of peace? It's nice when there are not wars, but that's a reflection of peace. That's not peace in itself. All the things that we like about peace are the things that are just the reflections of the peace, not the peace itself. Because peace begins with every single human being on the face of this earth. The true peace the peace that Prem Rawat travels the world talking about doesn't begin with ending poverty or a global ceasefire. It begins with you. In my opinion, the ideal should be to have peace on this earth. Where people feel and celebrate having peace. We talk about prosperity. In my formula, and this is only because I have observed it, prosperity without peace is chaos. Chaos. Everybody is wondering what is going on. I mean, isn't just a few years ago, everything was wonderful. Everybody was proud. Yes, the economy. Yes, the economy. Yes, the economy. And then all of a sudden, prosperity without peace leads to chaos. If we want to avoid this chaos, then we have to work on what peace really is. That peace is not a monastery. That peace is not absence of noise. That peace is not absence of war. Peace is not a declaration. Peace is a fundamental human need that needs to be felt from within. And I'm paraphrasing the United Nations Charter that it is in the minds of men, of human beings, that the wars are created. That's where it comes from. And I just want to add this much, that it is from the hearts of the human beings that peace will be created. 
сердце должно это понимание. When there is a simple recognition of one another, that we may look different, that we may speak different, but we have the same fundamental needs that we share this place called planet Earth. There are people who give five reasons, six reasons, seven reasons, ten reasons of why there cannot be peace on this earth. I have 6.5 billion reasons why there should be peace on this earth. Not one or two or three or four or five. This is when, this is the time when the nations need to come together. Because remember, it is those kings and those rulers in whose rule peace reigned that were considered the most successful rulers. And prosperity followed. These are not impossible dreams. These are realities that can be had. If we can make such a mess out of this earth, if we have that much power, then certainly we have enough power to bring peace on this earth too. Question remains whether it is something that we want to do or not, because peace begins with every one of you. When you look at a city at night, you see it lit up, a whole area that is lit up. But don't forget, it is individual bulbs that are actually in action, making that scene look the way it looks. Individual bulbs. It is individual human beings who need the peace. It is individual human beings in whom the desire resides. And it is on the individual human being stage that the peace needs to dance. I think people are, are becoming more aware of each other and finding out that there's not a lot of differences, even if you're from the United States or you're from you know, Africa, Japan, what have you, we all share the same emotions. And I think with people becoming more global and communicating that these barriers of what we've, what we've considered our major differences will start breaking down. Peace is a very big word, I would say. And I think it's all what we are looking for. And it's, um, in the end, I think it's just within us. We can't look somewhere else for it. We have to come up with it by ourselves. I'm very hopeful that it's possible in our lifetimes. And it starts with one person, and it starts within. Bobby Kennedy used to say that uh, the, the actions of a thousand people, the small actions of a thousand people, form uh, ripples of hope which circle out and uh, turn into a wave which changes the whole world. And I'd like to think that um, in some small way you know, that I could contribute to a process like that. At its core, Prem Rawat's message is very simple. For peace to come, we must first look within. Look within and find the peace that already exists, that has always existed, just below the surface. Do whatever is necessary to bring peace in your life, because when you bring peace in your life, not only will it bring you peace, it will also bring you immense amount of happiness and a gratitude, thankful to be alive. That's what's gone, that's what's missing. Human beings do not recognize human beings. They do not recognize other human beings as, hey, you are alive too, like I am, you are alive too. As I am important to me, you are important to you. You share the same earth as I do. 
I say this many times. Scientists wanted to know if there's life out there. So they set up these array of antennas searching the skies, searching the heavens to see if there is life. And I'm not saying there is life or not life out there, but they have been searching for a long time. So far, up to this point in time, they haven't found anybody. So here we are. For millions and 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 millions of miles around, there is nobody uh, out there but us. That's it. Just us. Six and a half billion us. And either we learn to live with each other or we are going to end up creating living hell here on earth. Idea of peace for every individual, every individual in peace, believe me, is the only way that there will be heaven here on earth. I do not represent any religion. I do not represent an ideology. I do not represent any institution in that sense. But from the age that I started to speak, till this point in time, this is what I have said. Today, it is my privilege to stand here in Padova, in front of you, and once again say the same thing. What you're looking for is inside of you, and you should be in peace. You should be in that happiness. Thank you.